Hi there, DW Berman here, showing you how to model this shape using uh, a simple geometry in Modeler and using layout to actually get this uh, shape. This is in response to a thread on the Lightwave forum asking how to make a blanket, cover a bed, or a duvet. So this is what we want to end up with. This here is what we started with. It's just a simple plane, subdivided, and uh, I knifed through the edges so that we have a nice sharp corners when it's subdivided and it is subdivided and uh, that's it for the modeling so let's go over to layout I'm gonna load the object load the blanket and there's my blanket I'm gonna raise this off the floor make sure I'm on frame zero or because I'm a have auto keyframe on let me raise the blanket off the floor I'm going to add a floor to this. I'm going to go add dynamic objects under the items tab. And I'm going to call this one the floor. And I don't want it to be a sphere. I want it to be a plane. And I don't want the plane to be a meter off the ground. I want it to be ground level. And uh, now I need to add the box I'm using to stand in for the, the bed. So I'm going to add another dynamic object, collision. I'm going to call this one bed collision. Hit OK. I don't want this to be a sphere either. I want this to be a box. So there's my box shape. I'm going to hit uh, H to scale. I'm going to bring in the sides quite a bit. And I'm going to bring the Y down. And I'm going to lower it a little too. I'll probably need to change the Z. a bit and move it in the Z a bit so basically it's you know under the bed under the blanket rather um, this is already set up I I'll change something else on that later need to add cloth effects to the blanket so go to the properties tab for that object dynamics tab add dynamics cloth effects double click it or just click on it go to the Etc. tab, and I'm going to change the preset to cotton thick. And I'm going to change the gravity to negative 9. Woohoo! Uh, also, on the collision tab, I need to set the collision detect on so that it will detect the collision objects. And I'm just going to start here. Oh, I'm going to change my, uh, make sure my end keyframe on the timeline is something longer than 60 and hit calculate. And look at that, something's happening. It might not be exactly what we want and in fact I know this first part isn't. Look at it sliding off there. It's also weird that the texture is, the object's moving through the texture anyway. It's sliding off the bed so I need to change something on the the bed object or the bed collision object. So let me click on that. Hit P for uh, yeah now I'm in the uh, collision objects properties. I want to change the f friction power to 50% or just 50. And let's try that again. Let's if you have uh, none of the windows open, none of the, the dynamics windows open, you can use, where is it, the IKB, IKB calculate under the modify tab. That looks like uh, control X. And there we go, we have our blanket falling on the bed. If you hit the uh, control, it kills the calculation. We're getting some weird poofiness. It's like these uh, ends are sticking out too far, and uh, I don't know if I'll get rid of that. I don't want to spend too much time tweaking. So uh, let me just go to blanket, properties. I'm going to lower the substructure down to, say, 250 and lower the spring to 250. It's best to just, you know, change these things one at a time. But I'll change three at a time, just for time's sake. Change the stretch limit to 10. And, you know, depending on the scale of your scene, you might need to tweak these uh, in completely different ways. But uh, just for the sake of time, I'm not going to do any more tweaking on that. I will raise the the bed up, 
I will raise the bed object a bit and move it down a little and then try calculating it again, the dynamics. And that's a bit better. But if I had a UV map set on this thing, it wouldn't um, move through the texture like that. And in fact, I made a mistake. I set the, I changed the bed scale and position on something that was not on keyframe zero. So now I have to set a keyframe on zero and delete that keyframe and recalculate again. Sorry about that. Just wasting your time. There we go. That looks much net, much nicer at some points at least. So I don't think it'll do anything more than I want. So there we go. It's not perfect. We can uh, tweak it some more. And you know, depending on which frame you want it, you don't even have to use like the final resting position. Let's like, say I like it better in this position here. So I like the shape here. So let me uh, just click on my blanket. Make sure I'm on the blankets. Have the blanket layer selected, blanket object selected. Go to save, save trans object, and I'm getting getting this warning that says use a different file name. So I'll call it uh, blanket shaped two. So I have a new blanket, and that made a new object. So let me switch over to Modeler so we can see my new object. Load object, blanket shaped two. Okay, and there it is. There's my blanket. You see, we have some you know, weirdness, it just kind of puddles out on the floor, which we don't want, but we can uh, definitely tweak that. If you hit the semicolon key, we get the, what's it called, the magnet tool, magnet drag. Let me see, it's B under modify, dragnet. Yeah, and we can right-click to change the size of the influence area and just kind of drag the, drag the points in. Yeah, just tweak it however you need to tweak it. And you know, depending on how much time you uh, send, you spend uh, tweaking the cloth effect settings, uh, you might not have as much tweaking in in modeler to do. But it gives us your your nice basic shape. And just kind of makes quick work of it. So there you have it, using uh, cloth effects, some simple collision objects, and um, what was that other thing? Yeah, save transformed to make a blanket for a bed. If I hit uh, tab, we can smooth it out even more. All right, have fun.